on performance acceleration journey by Sharmila Khan presented by Jobs for Her empowering women to restart their career. You can visit Jobs for Her's new reskilling page on JFH portal to upgrade yourselves with new skills. And I am Gayatri. She is the director HR business partner with CA Technologies. She has an experience of 19 years in the field of human resources. During her first career, she has a broad range of experience in human resources from hotel industry to technology company and also worked in various functions of human resources. So I'd like to thank uh, Shamila for giving us our valuable time in conducting this webinar. And just before I pass it over to Sharmila, I request all of you to place yourselves on mute. If you have any technical issues, please leave a chat on the chat window and I will get back to you on resolving that. For questions regarding the webinar, you can ask them during the question and answer session or you can drop your questions in the chat window and once Sharmila is done with the presentation, she will look at the questions and uh, answer them uh, during the question and answer session. All right. Uh, also keep your questions related to the topic and do not get diverted from the topic so that we do not cross the time frame. We just have one hour time frame and everybody needs to get their questions answered. So let's stick to the topic and not get diverted. So I'm going to pass it over to Sharmila now. I'm going to make her the presenter. Okay. I've made her the presenter now. Have a great session, everyone. Enjoy the webinar. Over to you, Sharmila. Um, so I'll talk about the performance management and performance. I would like to take this opportunity to share about how a performance uh, uh, journey, performance management journey, so to say, in CA has transformed in the last several years. Um, most of you as professionals would have experienced uh, how the performance management is done in the organization and for majority of us it's more like a check, uh, you know, checklist as opposed to really using the opportunity to accelerate a career. So at CA, uh, the last two years we have kind of transformed ourselves uh, to use this performance management tool which is an offering of HR to use it as a source to invest in a career to have more candid conversation and uh, how do we kind of shift uh, the entire orientation of focusing on uh, more of uh, getting the right rating and uh, finding out why my performance is not considered to be exceeded and on and just an average uh, it's more towards feedback as opposed to feed forward so um I have spent uh, you know, uh, my entire career in HR and uh, right from my internship to till today in my, in my career journey, um, this tool has been the most hated tool you know, by employees. Uh, nobody liked it, including the managers. And I think over the period of time as HR professionals, I have started to dislike because um, we will be spending roughly about four to five months just to make sure that employees are completing their self-appraisal and then the managers are required to complete the uh, performance reviews and then eventually uh, you know both the parties have to sign up and then the conversation somewhere has to converge so in the entire process um, we realized that uh, you know as hr i was only chasing people to make sure that the process is complied to and that's what i was measured and that's where how um, the managers are measured whether they have completed the process on a timely basis or not uh, but somewhere, if you look at, um, if I were to give an example, like if you look at a startup company, I've also had experience working with the startups in a large setup. In a startup company, nobody really bothered about the performance management system. But they they always had performing teams. And the startups carried, the, at least the kind of companies that I was associated with, uh, had just about, you know, uh, roughly 300 to 350 people, less than essentially 500. And then the large setups that I worked with had more than like 10,000 employees in one location. So I uh, had experience working with both sides of the organization and then realized the amount of time and energy a large organizations and multinationals spend um, on in, in this entire process is way too much. There's a lot of administrative burden in the entire exercise. And, but still does not really yield you the top 10, 20 or top 30. Um, so uh, the teams are not high performing in that sense. But if you go to the startups and small setup, uh, people are driven. People are just driven irrespective of whether you have a performance management tool or you don't have a performance management tool. So 
at CA, what we did is we somewhere wanted to kind of, you know, uh, meet the road by having to have converged this performance management, the tool itself, and how are we actually administering the tool. So that was the focus. We looked at our entire uh, performance uh, management process and found out that there was necessity for us to make a shift and move the entire process towards slightly more progressive and it should be more employee friendly and it should it should give you some results. It should help either the employee and the managers. So um, what we did is we actually did one online chain jam uh, session across CA worldwide. It was not limited to one particular region. Um, we, we actually went to all the employees and managers and asked them, is this performance management system working for you or not? Uh, um, and uh, there was no, no, no prizes for guessing because naturally they said that it is not working. Uh, then we had to double click and see what is not working for them. So naturally from an employee point of view, they felt it is not really helping them to accelerate the performance. It is not really giving them the right feedback, which would help them to improve. Um, and from a manager point of view, it was a quite a draining exercise because employees will essentially start negotiating uh, during that conversation to only to get the right rating as opposed to really, uh, you know, putting their attention towards um, how can I actually improve? What are the areas of opportunity for them? If I have to move the needle from A to A plus, what are the key uh, skills or the competencies that are required? Um, so, um, and how do I actually plan my, how do I craft my career? And I think the like basic fundamental questions which most of the employees will not ask and the managers will also think that if they have not been asked, then they need not really kind of address it in that sense. So, um, eventually what does this employee performance lead to? Right? It leads to career organizations growth if it is not contributing towards that, um, but not improving the productivity overall of your organization, uh, then then there is no point of having such a, you know, it's the monster, the process that we have built around us. So um, we uh, we went around and find, found that, you know, basis of conversation across all the employees at uh, each level, um, what was missing in the entire performance management is the focus of the conversation. And the conversation was not also timed. You know, at the end of the year, essentially, uh, employee and manager will have a career-specific conversation or a performance-based conversation, and uh, then you deal with surprises as employees. Um, so that's something that was totally missing. It is not the conversation was not happening, but the conversation was not happening with the level of details that it should happen, and the level of and the intervals that it should uh, it should happen. So. So that was the, some of the fundamental, uh, you know, uh, not that they were not known, but they just become a little bit more explicit when we had this conversation. So these were our learnings when we did this uh, employee or uh, jam sessions across CA. And um, from an employee point of view, it was viewed as an annual checklist, you know, and the manager will come and chase you. You just have to kind of maintain this Excel sheet. Employee has to say that, yes, I have completed and I will go and kind of of go around as HR and we will ask people to complete the process. So that was going on. It was not forward-looking driven and uh, it was not, and my employee was never excited about having that conversation. Employee always thought it was very burdensome and they just want to make sure that the conversation gets over as quickly as possible uh, unless, you know, the employees are high performing and um, or knew exactly, but that percentage will be not more than 10% in any organization for that matter. So those are the employees just like to hear about that they are very good. I mean, it's not that they do not know, but it was always nice to hear it from the manager. But the rest of the 80% or, you know, 90% of your organization primarily employees would not like to have this conversation because nothing new, there's nothing new in that conversation. So um, those were the learnings. Um, then what we did is, we actually, that's where our journey started with respect to how do I, how do we kind of totally transform, totally rebrand our performance management system and, and, and then, you know, position this entire process as a performance acceleration. So in 2013, um, you know, we decided to kind of shift gears and uh, um, <clears throat> so earlier HR, uh, you know, it's uh, performance discussion was more driven from this from HR. It was more of an HR, uh, you know, off and HR needs to drive this conversation. HR needs to push managers to drive this conversation. But then we kind of shifted gear and decided that it has to be driven from 
of the business and not from the hr so any communication around the performance discussion would have to be driven from the business or uh, they have to own it whether it is the communication the way the uh, talent calibration will take place how ratings will happen and um, eventually how the entire uh, performance uh, pulse conversation will be uh, orchestrated so what we did is we actually created the process and orchestrated and facilitated the process but we did not own the process uh, right so that that was a big change essentially you know uh, the entire process became more of a business driven as opposed to hr driven i will also kind of highlight you know i just want to kind of share this process with you to begin with i'll spend some time and then i will talk about as a women employee where do i have a role and what is what is the role that you know um, what are the opportunities that i am missing and i will tell you some stereotypes that uh, at least in my personal experience working uh, in the industry from the nine, uh, you know from the past uh, uh, 19 years um, something that we have seen uh, and experienced in uh, working in variety of organizations um then let's go back to the you know the topic that we're discussing is uh, you know we kind of globalize the process tools and resources uh, the purpose was here we are a multinational organization all of us are associated with companies of those kinds um so the the way the performance discussions are managed in india versus other location there is always uh, uh, you know there is always a different set of rules applied so if you're working in north america the level of uh, the the intervals of communication the ta- the process around the communication and uh, how the rating is dif- differentiated how the calibration is taking place somewhere there was always a uh, difference of opinion and if you are an employee who who has a remote manager uh, their understanding about the performance acceleration and the process is different than the uh, than the employee who has a local manager so company you know the employees who are working in a, a remote uh, matrix organization um, they tend to have some challenges because if the process and the tools are not you know globalized then they, they tend to have a little bit of a local flavor and that causes a bit of a constraint within the team then also uh, uh, you know the tools that are what are my resources how do i educate myself so if you look at it fundamentally majority of the employees are not trained to write effective self appraisal um, um so um, they just kind of write the task what they have done but they do not know how do they fit into the overall scheme of things how do they actually contribute to the overall product so some of these things were not actually you know um, factored uh, in a performance tool and, and uh, the focus of the entire discussion is more towards i have contributed you know so <clears throat> i was the paramount thing but if you look at majority of uh, i'm assuming if all of you are from the technology company uh, majority of the organization has is at is at some level of maturity in terms of agile adoption and where the meaning of uh, you know i the world the, the world has kind of moved from i to we it it no longer matters how good i how good i am or uh, how well i have contributed eventually i will be measured uh, how effectively my entire team has performed and the new world collaboration is a very very effective uh, you know a very powerful influencer in our career uh, so uh, that's something that we kind of baked in into our performance the acceleration process um we'll talk about that as we progress and uh, then we looked at i mean if overall this performance process has to inspire you has to motivate me it should not kind of i should not shy away most of the employees think okay now that the process now the time has come for me to uh, uh, have a performance discussion and um, you know i just not going to get over it i really don't enjoy it i'm not really sure so some of those feelings and emotions as employees go through and but how and we wanted to kind of look at this opportunity to see it should become something that employee look forward to so um i'll pause for a second i just want to make sure that if you have any questions um please uh, <clears throat> keep writing it or if you want to kind of uh, chat uh, you can just send it to me so that i can address it um, during this conversation or once we stop for q and a okay so just to kind of give you a sense of how what is our philosophy um, you know our, philo- our entire performance the uh, acceleration philosophy set on these three values which is um, align adjust and accelerate um this is essentially about you know uh, we have we have created this framework in terms of aligning your goals all of us are coming to the organization every day with a sense of purpose you know we uh, while we may not be really uh, very good in articulating what is my purpose of coming to office you know but uh, but but the bottom line is we all have a purpose we all have uh, some goal to perform and if you cannot articulate that 
Uh, then there is a, some work that we need to do. Uh, we should just be going back to our desk and see what exactly am I working and how does it align to the overall, um, you know, overall success of the uh, product that you're working on, the type of job that you are working on. Then I should also have, uh, you know, uh, I'm assuming that um, majority of, of you are aware of the agile process. In this, what happens is um, um, the, the entire performance uh, acceleration tool needs to be a little bit more nimble and uh, it needs to be agile for me to be able to make adjustments and changes because I don't have predictability what I will do in next two months or three months or maybe six months. Earlier, we had a roadmap of 18 months, so then you have some visibility for next six months. This is the type of job. But right now, we are working in a very volatile environment, and uh, uh, the feature that you are working in today, uh, you know, it may be there, it may not be there in the overall product. Uh, so, uh, so I should be able to kind of make those adjustments in my system and add that, modify it to meet the business requirements, etc. Then accelerate, you know, having to have uh, relevant feedback and timely coaching. So what we call is a powerful pulse conversation, which we actually uh, encourage and educate our managers to have it on a, either a bi-weekly, monthly, or a quarterly, uh, whatever works best, uh, you know, best either in employee's interest or from a manager point of view. And uh, the owner does not lie on the manager. It is not manager's problem alone. Employees are highly encouraged uh, to have a conversation with uh, their managers, they can set up these, uh, you know, frequent meetings uh, in their calendar, so that there is a there is a rigor, uh, there is a, there is a predictability. Uh, so in my case, like I do once in a month a conversation with my manager to see how things are progressing, what are the things that are working well for me, uh, support that is required. So and nothing will be surprised at the end of you know 12 months of my. Uh, uh, in, in my in my job, I will not be have any surprises. I don't have to deal with surprises, and I won't have to give any surprises to my manager. So you can actually, uh, you know, set up this. And I do find that, you know, from my experience, while this is more of a recommendation, it's not a mandate at TA, but um, I highly encourage participants uh, that they should definitely, uh, you know, um, um, set up these meetings voluntarily. Okay, don't wait for your managers to come back and say that. You know, let us have this meeting unless and until my manager will tell me I will not set up this meeting because it's a, it's a lost opportunity. So as an employee, I mean, not just, you know, this is a gender agnostic. It's not necessary if you're a male employee, you need not. If you're a female employee, you should, uh, you know. But I just want to kind of highlight since most of uh, participants are, uh, you know, diversity. Uh, you should definitely, you know, uh, go and have a conversation with your manager and then um, have an explicit conversation about your career. Don't make, don't allow this, don't you lose the opportunity of understanding how your career is growing. Uh, what are the key things? If you have some plans, if you have, if you have a, if you have planned your career, if you want to grow in certain areas, you should definitely start having this conversation, set up a calendar invite without any hesitation. So every organization promotes that. An employee who actually does that will be uh, actually doing a service to the organization also. It will be, they will be really helping themselves to kind of accelerate in their uh, career, so to say. This is just a repeat, so I will uh, skip on that. Uh, so, um, you know, like I mentioned, the rating versus the qualitative conversation, and that's the orientation of the entire performance acceleration when we made a shift you know, in the past, what used to happen um, during the discussion, the employee will be kind of really pushing the boundaries to um, to agree on the certain rating because they believe that they have done certain things which qualifies them to get into an exceed rating. And the manager will also kind of, you know, uh, work uh, doubly hard to make sure that, you know, uh, whatever rating they, the employee might be thinking, but uh, they may not agree to that. So usually it is about negotiation on the rating, but not really having a very qualitative conversation with respect to um, what are the key skills, what are the key competencies that as an employee I need to really acquire uh, in order to, you know, um, to grow in my career. So um, in our experience, you know, working as the HR business partner for a variety of uh, businesses and at, across the various levels, we do find that employees actually negotiate and demand for uh, the promotions wherein um, uh, it may not be, uh, I, I don't want to generalize it, but I just thought I, it's still worth mentioning. Many women employees kind of value 
the flexible work arrangement as compared to um, you know the career opportunities or, or uh, taking on additional responsibilities because somewhere they have to compromise on some other aspects which they might be valuing at that particular stage of their life so um, I think that it's a pitfall in, in in our opinion. It's a pitfall certainly from a career development point of view. Um, uh, as a as an employee, irrespective of the gender, we should definitely have a very conscious conversation about what are the skills that I need to acquire. Uh, you know, every two years I should be able to see some change in the the type of job that you're performing. If you're not upskilling, and that's where uh, that's where we feel stuck in a career. So. Um, so that was the, really the purpose of you know having to have this rating versus moving towards the qualitative conversation and that's how we address this um, uh, uh, powerful pulse conversation so pulse so when we did when we designed this first powerful pulse conversation so it has to have an element of you know what are the career aspirations of an employee what are the goals have they set for themselves and uh, how frequently the manager and the employee are having a coaching and a feedback session, and uh, are we having the stay discussion? And this is what's making me to stay in the company. Have I grown in this organization? Have I gathered? Have I uh, gained new skills? If you really look back in your career today, um, are you doing the same job what you were doing three years back? Um, maybe with the greater speed, uh, with the level of efficiency and the level of confidence may have increased. Uh, but fundamentally, my job uh, may not have changed, and you're doing doing the same job repeatedly uh, with a higher speed. But the complexity may have increased to some extent, but not for, not dramatically. Then it's an area of concern for you. You should definitely start thinking consciously that um, that I need to now add new skills. I mean, at any point in time, as an employee, um, you know, we do advocate that in your job there has to be um, minimum you know 20 percent of learning 20 to 30 20 is like minimum and 60 percent you should have been uh, if you look at it from a career point of view you should have uh, 60 percent of the uh, is what you should contribute and 40 percent should be learning if you don't ask that carefully uh, the chances are that we will be stuck in a career and uh, in the environment that we live in uh, it's highly competitive and that's where we lose out on the rightful opportunities uh, you know in our career in the absence of not having to really consciously plan and get engaged with the organization to develop ourselves so what we have done is uh, you know uh, as part of this exercise so this deck just to tell, let you know um, you know we shared internally with employees as well as with managers uh, just to make them more conscious and sensitized about the importance of having to have uh, uh, using some of these elements of performance acceleration and how do I actually use this first conversation for my for my uh, professional benefit. So we also kind of outline what is the manager's role and what is employee's role. So uh, until such time, nobody has really told me what am I supposed to do except the fact that I was told by HR uh, that, you know, please go and complete your self-appraisal and make sure that you are signing in. So those were the only two expectations from me and I would just do whatever I thought was the best. Um, and from a manager's point of view, they just have to make sure that they don't go rating of, you know, because it was a forced rating, mandated rating. Uh, they cannot have more than 20% of the top talent. So their focus is primarily towards that and make sure the process is completed because then, you know, somebody or the other will be kind of chasing them. But we said, no, that's not the only expectation. Um, that should be the byproduct of everything. So hence, we said clearly what should manager do and, uh, you know, what should employee do. I will just talk a little bit. Uh, it's all some of these, you know, broad points. Um, you can just scan it a little bit. And but I will tell you what is important. What is it we expect employee to do uh, when they're having these conversations? Is they have to be a little bit more clear. They should try and bring in this clarity. What are my career aspirations? What are my two two years long term goal? What do, what are the what are the goals that I have in my mind? It could be 12 months. It could be 24 months. It could be like four years, five years, whatever the case may be. Um, but if they have if they have this level of clarity or if they start developing this level of clarity it will help them to uh, to have an active conversation with the manager uh, then reflect upon what is what what did i actually contribute you know so uh, especially in the in uh, if you are associated with the organization where agile adoption is like pretty much at a maturity stage um, uh, so it's very difficult to highlight if you're a junior engineer 
you know so uh, in a group what happens it gets uh, so some senior members or people or the pos or the from the camouflage the contribution and it doesn't seem like that i have contributed in some form or the other so you have to be a little bit more conscious about what exactly my contributed and how overall my contribution fits into the uh, overall product delivery so somewhere uh, you know um, you have to become conscious you have to write down and some of the good habits i have learned from my you know in my work experience i had a manager who would always write who will act who actually maintained a book and would write down uh, any team member who has done something good and uh, at the end of the he will actually take out that notebook and beautifully read out those comments and it was i think uh, he was the only manager in my entire career and i thought that was a fantastic uh, you know uh, gesture because in some uh, in some cases i did not even remember myself that i had done some, something that in that order and it was worthy of appreciation it may have been appreciated at that point in time but my manager cared to remember even after like 8 9 months so it was a very appreciable you know at least personally i thought it was quite commendable so similarly find some tools find some means there's a lot of information uh, that is available uh, for us to kind of google i mean so uh, look at what works best in your environment uh, look at uh, what would work with you and what is what is the tool that would work between you and your manager so look at that and then highlight your accomplishments and then you should be able to articulate your accomplishment within two or three lines okay so i think i think having to have this kind of an elevator speech really helps us to kind of uh, you know um, highlight if you're meeting very senior people or you're meeting some executives uh, if you can articulate that how you contribute to the organization will be very powerful effective uh, messaging then what are your key strengths uh is something that all of us should be able to if you don't uh, you know i mean i'm very good in let's say execution or let's say i am good in c++ programming i'm pretty good at that um th those are those are some uh, those are like functional uh, you know capabilities basically these are skills um but if you look at uh, what are your uh, uh, something i can suggest is having to have mbti or a disk or uh, doing some of these uh, you know assessments and identifying your uh, Uh, natural preferences uh, will will collaborate better if you if you were to do some of these assessments i mean some of these assessments are actually free online uh, but uh, if you want to kind of double click on that uh, uh, you can reach out to me otherwise or else you could uh, you could also uh, you know talk to your own organization reach out to your hr or to your education team to see how you can uh, take those assessments uh, we do that at ca we encourage many employees to take the assessment so that they get a sense of what are they good at and what are they uh, what are the areas of opportunities and what are their natural preferences so if you have a recognition of these things and it's easier for you to work and align yourself accordingly <clears throat> so take advantage of some of these tools that are available within the organization um then uh, you know identify what are the specific development opportunities have the conversations with your manager you may agree or may disagree also it's all right for you to disagree i mean it's all right so um, you know but but have those conversation don't just leave it for accident don't just leave it and assume that unless my manager initiates i need not talk about it and uh, and then always have this question what is next the moment you ask this question the conversation takes at a you know moves at a different pedestal so uh, usually we shy away and uh, hence uh, i think it's a, it's a very powerful question in my opinion and uh, the moment you have it you are actually engaging your manager to really discuss about what's next for me okay um, so this is the last slide uh, yeah this is the last slide um so um so if you look at it as an uh, i mean as a participant i'm assuming most of you probably doing it if you're not doing it uh, you know i would i would kind of just prompt you a little bit and you know uh, think about how many times i've actually gone and asked and solicited feedback from peers or from a colleagues or subordinates um, you know so uh, that itself also can be a baseline so sometimes we are assuming that you know whatever i'm doing is fantastic i'm being appreciated but it's all it's always a good idea to kind of really stop yourself and double click on some of the areas of opportunities that we may be missing in the overall scheme of things um how many of us have mentors uh some of us probably i'm not sure how many but uh have you signed up to be a mentor do you have a mentor or uh, have are you a mentee
so um, in my work experience i was always shy honestly you know to uh, go and ask people uh, other than my manager or my colleague i would never ask can really find work but then i thought uh, then uh, then i learned of course uh, with you know as you start progressing in your career you start learning some of these things uh, um having a mentor in the organization actually helps immensely because it helps you to network in the organization so uh as you start growing in the organization your ability to network within the organization becomes very very essential okay and somewhere uh having a mentor helps uh because they help you to if you have if you're picking a mentor i mean the mentor need not be from the same location or from the same bu it could be cross bu it could be outside the location it just gives you access to more information and also it kind of uh, it gives you a lateral view of a situation if you are have a situation and you think you need some guidance you should not be shying away and you will be surprised if when you reach out to mentor they will be more than glad to guide you so uh, use these opportunities if you have if you're not capitalizing on them and uh, how many times you have actually asked manager about your career plan so um this is something that i can share this is bit of a challenge at least in ca that um not many women engineers actually will go and ask a manager what are my career plans okay uh it's never a proactive action um it's more of an escalation if at all we receive if some employee may come back a women employee may come back after you know the, the promotion cycle saying that uh i was expecting a promotion but uh, not it not happen or just because i went on mat leave and my promotion got held up and things like that uh but if you really kind of look uh, look into it i mean none of the uh, that particular employee may not have had conversation ever with the manager about the career planning so so these are some of the you know um, pitfalls in our own uh, the way we plan the way we uh, engage our manager in a conversation um it should not be pro uh, it should not be uh, it, should, it should be proactive action it should not be a reactive action uh, it should not be like once everybody is being promoted and i am kind of sitting and sulking in some place and then i go back and say okay i was expecting a promotion but i, I could not be considered whatever the case may be and uh, the last thing uh, uh, before i kind of stop and then we open up for q and a um uh, how many of us think that uh, you know uh, if i ask for more work um it will it will kind of definitely i'll have to re, it will rebalance my uh, work life balance so um i'm no different i can tell you that uh, with young children at home uh, uh, while it remain as my priority for a good amount of time uh, but i started to train myself you know having to speak with people like you in variety of experiences um it should just be a part of a hygiene uh, we should not allow this to somewhere come so it is more of a mental block and uh, you know it took me a while to get over it honestly speaking uh, um and uh, then i realized to work life balance will happen as long as i know how to manage my work so it's a, it's a it's a problem within me and not really the ecosystem so um so but we need not shy away uh, that that the ask and that's something that i would nudge that we should definitely be engaging our manager in a conversation to see if there is a capacity uh, for you to do more uh, but but you just have to be a little bit more smart uh, to see how do i balance it so um with that i think uh, this is the last slide that i had for you um so if you have any questions um i'll be more than glad to kind of respond to you <clears throat> thank you sharmila for that power packed uh, webinar i'm sure ladies over here would have gained um, really valuable tips for accelerating their performance during their career and know what to expect from them when they get back to their career so so we have um, uh, the lines open now so if you have any questions please leave them on the chat window or you can come forward and ask your questions okay um well uh, sharmila i have a question i'm gayatri um, and i have this question uh, well as a working mother yeah. when uh, you have a lot of work pressure you have a lot of work to be completed how do we put it across to the manager and tell them that i need some time to finish up the work or um, i can't take up so much of load how do we put it across to the manager 
Sure. Um, it's a very valid question, Gayatri. And I think uh, <clears throat> I can tell you managers are also parents. I mean, like we have children at home, right? So um, it should be absolutely fine for you to state that, you know, uh, if you think you can't take on additional, it's absolutely fine to say so. Uh, so either way you should be able to com uh, comfortably have this candid conversation. Uh, but my request is don't just, you know, commit and then fail. Uh, if you have a good view, uh, you know, and you have a good reflection point that uh, uh, I will not be able to do this much because it kind of, you know, creates an imbalance in your life, uh, state that. And um, if you think for next, if you have a visibility for next eight, nine months, I won't be able to, I won't be only to do this much, say that. It, so the only key to addressing this problem is to have a very honest and open uh, conversation with your manager. Um, you need not think that it will interfere with your career planning. That much I can tell you because at CA, you know, this is a very, this is a very typical problem uh, across organization when we experience it. Uh, in some cases, employee doesn't want to say that because they're not, you know, A, they're not very sure, honestly, because they think that it will impact the performance uh, rating. B, uh, they don't want to be viewed as someone that who's just bothered about the child and not really worried about the, you know, career. Uh, you don't want to be viewed like that. Uh, some of these, you know, uh, inhibitions that are there in our mind. But uh, I can tell you, we have done some uh, manager sensitization sessions in our organization, um, basically to kind of, you know, coach managers when somebody is just going on mat leave and coming back on mat leave. When they're coming back, they're coming with a different set of responsibilities, you know, uh, 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 something that you cannot even uh, imagine because only the person who's going through will know, he, know that how the time is now being divided. So uh, they should know how to kind of include those women employees in the new world, okay? So we do that some amount of manager sensitization session. At the same time, we do a session for, uh, we also do sessions in formally with women employees, how to have, uh, how to bring in that synergies in your work life, you know? So your, your, your family will always be there. You can't treat work separately and uh, home separately. It has to, they will have to be converged. And somewhere if you have this open conversation, I'm quite confident that uh, uh, unless you have a manager with whom you can't work with, I mean, those will be extraordinarily unique situations. But by and large, I think they can be sorted out with a good open discussion. Okay, so you, you mean to say that when we're when we're being honest about uh, the workload, we talk to the manager about it, uh, we are, uh, as in our... Um, a value will not go away, right? Like it won't be a negative side of our uh, No, no, I can guarantee you on that. I'll tell you, um, you know, um, uh, uh, when I when I was having my first child, I mean, I have two children and uh, when I had my first kid, um, I realized that I was not able to manage that job, which was, uh, I was working for a different organization. I don't want to name it. Uh, uh, but um, but but it was a very high pressure job. It meant also travel that to global locations and things like that. So I had a good reflection of my own situation. Uh, but just for the purpose of the for the benefit of our uh, you know participants who are pretty much you know having similar experiences like me in life, uh, I actually took a you know I decided that I will not be able to do justice to that job. I decided to change my job and I took a 50% cut and I came down two levels below because of my own personal uh, situation, um, the challenges that I had with my child and things like that. So, but you know, in the last seven, eight years, I have moved up in my current organization. I joined CA uh, when my, my first kid was just about like six, seven months old and now I had my second child here. Uh, so, you know, but, but one thing that I can tell you from my experiences, in some cases I failed, in some cases I learned from those failures, is creating an ecosystem around you. Okay, don't kill yourself uh, every time uh, to be a perfect mother, to be a perfect, uh, you know, um, uh, engineer at work or whatever the nature of the job that you're performing. Um, somewhere we will have to balance it, you know, because our biological clock and our career clock will somehow will be always contradicting each other. So, um, so, so it's all right uh, for us to sometimes kind of slow down in one area and, you know, pick up in the other, just have that right balance. And, you know, when I, when I talked about a mentor, okay, uh, having to talk to people who have been through these experiences and what are the typical challenges that they experience it's all right to learn from other people's experience you don't have to experience everything on your own you know so um, 
so um, some of you actually have advantage because uh, you know i have spent 19 years which is like uh, started several years ago then majority of you um then then uh, rely on other people's experience and now the world is so deeply and well connected that you can actually reach out to people and say that you know hey i'm having this problem what do you think i should be doing and uh, i can tell you it's not just ca but majority of the organizations do coach manages about inclusion okay so uh, it's all right for you to have those type of conversation but but i can tell you the moment you have this conversation your relationship with your manager will dramatically change they will appreciate the fact that you you understand your situation and you are extremely practical about it thank you so much sharmila um all right do we have anyone else to go ahead with the question okay one more question uh, from my end uh, so I, as you said we have to go ahead talk to the manager have a frequent uh, feedback and a conversation on how your performance is well sometimes i have seen that the manager when you having this conversation the, the manager gives you a positive feedback tells you about uh, what is coming in uh, line for you and all of that but when it comes to the rating or the appraisal time there is a difference so how can that be handled yeah so, so i think they were the typical challenges of our old like uh, like i said you know that's the reason why i purposely share this performance acceleration journey so when you are having a frequent uh, pulse conversation with your manager you are likely to have um, you know you will have a good view if you're not having those frequent conversations so let's say that i'm meeting my manager every month around my performance around my co- uh, career uh, i'm likely to have a good view of how i'm performing and things that are that are not doing and things that i'm not really doing well so uh, it will not be a surprise at the end of the day okay and i can tell you that uh, you know um, um not to kind of just like highlight too much about ca but uh, we have had situation where some of our women employees actually got promoted when they got back from maternity okay so they join on the day one after maternity and then within that week we actually inform them they have been promoted in that cycle and uh, um you know it was a fantastic uh, feeling and uh, uh, what else can you ask for you're blessed with a child and <laughs> you're back to work and uh, uh and you're also being recognized at work so what else can you ask for so to say so um uh, most of the organization will not consider maternity as a as a you know situation which you have to not only worry about work life balance and not really worry about the career so most managers are very mindful in that sense but if you have a situation which is slightly unique for your particular situation uh, my suggestion to you you should speak to your hr partner Uh, reach out to them and then you know seek that help because that's how the hr is const- uh, you know hr constructed if they find that employee is experiencing some of these biases and they're not comfortable talking about it to the manager they can always reach out to their hr partner and then share it and then they will be able to kind of guide you and uh, probably find the you know coaching opportunity with the manager so that it is not held against you just because you are dealing with it. and it's not just limited to child care okay it could be a elder care it could be your own health it could be your spouse's health there are multiple situations that all of us go through at some stage you know at every stage of our life so so the best would be to if you're not able to get through to these conversation with the manager then seek help from hr thank you so much sharmila i'm sure that um, the ladies would have here um, ladies here would have actually gained a lot of inputs from you and uh, they know what to expect and uh, what is waiting for them if they put in the right effort so thank you so much for this webinar